and Young is here to greet you, everybody, everywhere. Every Friday at this time he comes to say hello, by air. Brought to you by Atlanta for the smile of beauty. And by talent. For well-groomed hair. Hi, Panna. Hi, talent. Two products you should know on the Alan Young, Alan Young, Alan Young Show. It's Friday night again, and as usual, we take you to the little white cottage in Nice, California, where we find the star of our show, that young man who is young today and young forever, Alan Young. <laughs> what a wonderful evening today, Hey, what you so happy about, huh? Hey, I got a date with Betty. <laughs> well, you've had plenty of dates with Betty. I know, Zero, but I made up my mind. Tonight, I'm going to kiss her. <laughs> well, Alan, you told me you did kiss her once. Oh, well, that was an accident. Accident? Yeah, we were nibbling on a pretzel together, and our lips rounded a curve at the same time. <laughs> Alan, why don't you forget about girls? Forget girls? You shouldn't talk that way, you. After all, love is what makes the world go round. Not my world. <laughs> what makes your world go round, Zero? Six and a half glasses of beer. <laughs> oh, stop being so silly. Oh, oh the phone. I believe Betty, she worries about me. Oh. Oh, hello, Betty. Oh, that's Betty. Huh? Betty, yes. I guess you can hardly wait for me to come over tonight. <laughs> you go, what? Oh, uh, but Betty, why won't you go, go out with me? Hubert Updike, eh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Betty. Sure, that was Betty. She broke her date with me. Oh, you're really nuts about her, aren't you? I worship around her. Father would like to see me buried under. You know the trouble with you, Alan? You're not a man of action. Hmm? You know, once somebody tried to steal my girl, since San Susie. Susie. Oh. You know who he was? Hmm? Bone Crusher Kelly. Really? He sounds like a tough character. Yeah, but that didn't stop me. Huh? I walks up and I says, Listen, Bone Crusher, this town ain't big enough to hold the book of us, see? And you know, he was nice enough to help me pack. <laughs> You're right, Zero. Less talk and more action. Gee, if only I could think of some way to get Hubert out of the picture. What would make a fella forget about a girl? Well, all you gotta do is get Hubert interested in another girl. Another girl? Yes. That's it. That might take his mind off Betty. But how could we get uh, another... Wait a minute. I got an idea. Yeah. Set a trap for him. Yeah. Who was it that hooked Cary Grant? Ingrid Bergman. Who hooked Humphrey Bogart? Lauren Bacall. Who hooked John Garfield? Lana Tyner. Yeah, Zero, but where can we find that kind of bait? <laughs> well, how about that uh, girl who just moved into the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. That southern thing. She's beautiful. And she's loaded with dough. Zero, she sounds perfect. I'll get Hubert interested in her. The next thing... Here comes that Hubert up back now. Filthy rich Updike. Rich, huh? He really shows off his dough, huh? Yeah. Who else has a radio where the Lone Ranger yells, Hi-ho, gold? <laughs> Look, now, uh, don't forget, Alan. Remember to get him interested in that dial. Okay. Oh, Alan, I'm here, I'm here. Come gaze at me. Soon it will be night and my petals will close. <laughs> oh, so make yourself comfortable, Hubert. Here, sit down on this chair. Uh, no, I'd rather stand. Why, what's wrong with this chair? It looks like it's already been used. <laughs> Listen, Hubert, when are you going to realize that people are all equal? Ooh, what you say. <laughs> You're talking to an updike. My ancestors came over on the Mayflower, and they got off at Chrysler Rock. Cry Chrysler Rock? You mean Plymouth Rock. <laughs> Mine waited for something better to come along. <laughs> But I must be going now. I'm on my way over to Betty's house. Oh, you are? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. I uh, hear she broke her date with you to go out with me. Is that true, Alan? What if it is? Oh, Mother, turn on the oven. I'm cooking his goose tonight. <laughs> oh, that was a witty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 
Albert, uh, you can go out with Betty if you want to. It's perfectly all right with me. Alan, what's this? Go ahead. Go out with Betty. Matter of fact, I've got my eye on somebody else. It's that new girl down the street. Lulabelle. Oh, Lulabelle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that uh, southern girl. Hmm. Yes, I uh, met her last week. Not bad, Alan, not bad. Well, she's the beautiful, intelligent, and besides, she's the wealthiest girl in America. Oh, she must have plenty salt as a way. Well, you got quite a shaker, too. <laughs> Matter of fact, Hubert, she's got nearly as much money as you. Oh, that does sound intriguing. Intriguing. <laughs> Alan, I, I think I am going to marry Lula Bell. In fact, I'd like to go over there and propose to her right now. Well, that's fine. Why don't you? Well, I can't. You know, I'm really maladjusted. <laughs> I just can't propose. When I snuggle up to a girl, my breath comes in short pants. Huh? Heart chapter and marks, of course. <laughs> you, but you could put all your family fortunes together. All her cash and all your cash. Uh, then we could settle down and raise little deposits. <laughs> But, Alan, uh, since I'm so shy, maybe you would do me a favor and propose for me. Oh, sure, Hubert. I'm an old pal of yours, and I'd like to do you a favor, that is. <laughs> I'd be happy to go over to Lua Bell's right now. Oh, bully. Oh. Bully. Just plain bully. <laughs> and, Alan, uh, while you're proposing for me, uh, do you mind if I use your telephone? Not at all, Hubert. Hey, Zero. Yes? Zero, we're going over to Lula Bell. Lula Bell. I get it. Come on, Alan. Let's go. Oh, that Alan Young fell right into my trap. Now to dial that number. Oh, I do love to dial the telephone. Uh, hello, hello, Lula Bell? Uh, this is a friend of Alan Young. Look, uh, Alan is on his way there to propose to you. Yes. But the poor boy is so shy, he'll tell you he's proposing for someone else. Yes, he's really proposing for himself. He's crazy about you, Lula Bell. Goodbye. Oh, this will be my chance to gloat over, Alan. Oh, gloat, gloat, gloat. <laughs> Mind if I make your mouth water? How would you like this for dinner? Chicken a la Ritz, whipped potatoes, cream spinach, lemon meringue pie. Sound good? Boy, does to me. Well, me too. But do you realize that every one of those foods I mentioned is soft and creamy? And delicious though they may be, they fail in one important respect. They don't give our gums the exercise they need to help them keep firm and healthy. And firm, healthy gums, you know, are so important to sound teeth. Brighter, more sparkling smiles. That's why so many dentists recommend Ipana toothpaste and gum massage. For Ipana, when used with dental massage, helps give our gums the stimulation they need to keep them firm and healthy. Ask your dentist. A national survey shows that 7 out of 10 dentists recommend gum massage. Not only that, but dentists themselves prefer Ipana toothpaste two to one over any other dentifrice for their own personal use. So for the health of your gums, for sound bright teeth, a more sparkling smile, why don't you try Ipana toothpaste and gum massage? I-P-A-N-A. Ipana. Remember how John Alden proposed for Miles Standish? Well, right now, Alan Young is on his way to Lula Bell's to propose for Hubert Updike. Of course, what John Alden Young doesn't know is that Hubert has explained to Lula Bell that Alan is really proposing for himself. So let's join Alan and his pal Zero on their way to Lula Bell's house. Gee, Zero. Yeah? I don't know how to go about this. I've never proposed to a girl. Well, not for a long time, anyway. You mean you once did propose to a girl, Alan? Well, it was a long time ago, Zero. I was only nine, and she was 63. <laughs> and what made you propose to a dame 63 years old? Oh, she was wonderful, Zero. She was tall, dark, and used to lend me her ear trumpet. <laughs> I was the only kid in school who could put a curve on a spitball. Now look, Alan, you won't have no trouble. Hmm? Go on up and propose, and uh, look, uh, slip at this ring. Zero, where did you get that ring? I took it off of Hubert's finger before. Hmm? If you're proposing for Hubert, he ought to be supplying the ring. Well, that's a good idea, Zero. Yeah. Look, you just wait out here for me, huh? Okay. Huh? Yum, yum, today. Yum, yum, today. Yum. Ooh, oh. Hello, Lula Bell. Well, Alan Young, my great big sugar plum. Is that you all? <laughs> 
not really part of its padding. <laughs> Come on in, you great big hunk of man. You're as welcome here as a big mess of hominy grits and fried chitlins. Well, thanks, Lula Bell. Oh, why are we standing here, Alan, when there's a great big comfy sofa just crying for company? Okay. <sighs> Lula Bell, I, I came here for a very important reason. Oh, I know you did, honey child. But can't I fix your drink first? How about a nice mint julep? I'd rather have a Coke. But, honey child, us Southerners are famous for our mint drinks. Well, give me a Coke and throw a lifesaver in it. <laughs> oh, I, I just can't understand you know the men. Hmm? Oh, Southern men are so impetuous. Hmm? They just carry you away. In California, we have cars. <laughs> Oh, you all just don't like poor little old me all. Why, sure I do, little old Bell. <laughs> just that this is so important to me. I came over here to propose. Well, shut my mouth. <laughs> it sounds so unsanitary. <laughs> See, Lula Bell, I'm proposing for a friend of mine. He's too shy to propose for himself. Oh, I understand perfectly, honey child. You see, this friend of mine has lots of money. He's handsome and he's very anxious to marry you. Well, Sugarfoot, hug me till my levees break. <laughs> you mean you'll marry this friend of mine? Well, of course I want a proposal in the Southern tradition. You know, our Southern girls are so romantic. Make it soft and mellow. Well, that's the way you want it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Lula Bell. <laughs> you all as delicate as a magnolia blossom. <laughs> and your eyes are as big and bright as a southern moon. <laughs> oh, that's more like it, honey child. You're from the peach country and I'm from the orange country. What do you say we merge and make a fruit salad? <laughs> proposal I ever heard. And, Louisville, to make this proposal to my friend official, here, let me slip this ring on your finger. Oh, Alan. Oh, oh, what a beautiful ring. Oh, I'm crazy about it, Alan. Let me give you a great big hug. No, 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 please, Louisville. No, it's so tight. Louisville, please. You're bending my popcorn. <laughs> oh, that was a real Southern hug. I know. My Mason and Dixon just changed places. <laughs> well, I really go to be gotten now. I mean, got to be getting now. I mean, so long. <laughs> Gee. Who oh, those Southern girls? Well, better go over to Betty's house and tell her about Lula Bell and Hubert. But first, I'll stop and bend my pocket comb back into shape. <laughs> Daddy, I hated to break that date with Alan tonight. Betty, you've been seeing too much of that Alan Young. Oh, you're always picking on Alan. After all, every person on this earth was put there for a reason. There must be some reason why Alan's here. (laughs) Well, I haven't got any ideas, but Darwin had a theory. (laughs) Oh, Daddy, you shouldn't say things like that. Oh, hello, Betty. Hello, Papa. Oh, hello, Hubert. Well, Hubert, my boy. (laughs) Come right in. Yes, uh, thank you. I've got the most sensational news. It's uh, about Alan. News about Alan? Yes. Alan has just proposed to another girl. Oh, I don't believe it. But you believe it, don't you, Papa? (laughs) Hubert, I may hate Alan, and I may have a low opinion of him, but I'll say this much for him. He's too stupid to lead a double life. Oh, it's true, it's true. Cross my annuities and hope to get dividends. <laughs> I can't get over it. Alan proposing to another girl. Well, after all, Papa, you can't judge a book by its cover. Well, if that particular book ever shows up here, I'll tear off its index and kick him in his category. <laughs> oh, how could he do this to me? That must be Alan now. I'll let him in, Dad. All right, Betty, but just leave him to me. 
Hello, Betty. Hello, Mr. Ditton Pepper. <laughs> Hello, Hubert. <laughs> Should we try it from right to left? <laughs> Alan, you'd better clear out. The Ditton Peppers won't have anything to do with you. But what's wrong? What have I done? You know what you've done. You've made Betty the laughing stock of Van Nuys. Laughing stock of Van Nuys? Oh, no. I was with her, but she picked out that hat by herself. <laughs> you know what I mean. You've been seeing another girl. Another girl? Alan, there must be some explanation. Well, if there is, I'm ready to hear it. <laughs> oh, then you admit that you've been seeing another girl. Betty, I admit nothing. I'm innocent. Innocent, I tell you. You mean you haven't been seeing another girl? Bad girl. You haven't proposed to another girl? Ah, proposed. Sugar Plum, here's your Lulu Bell. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get married tomorrow. I'll wear my new strapless gown. What'll you wear? Ah. <laughs> Miss Lulabelle, did Alan Young propose to you? Show sure up. Alan Young, what have you got to say for yourself? Mr. Dibber, I can explain the whole thing. I was proposing for Miles Standish. I mean, Hubert told me that John Alden knew the bell was, was John Standish and Miles was... And now was gonna. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Alan Young, you led my daughter on with your promises, and I'm going to see to it that you're not going to make another girl miserable. You're going to marry Lulu Bell. But, Mr. Ditton Pepper. Alan, Alan, that's the only fair thing to do. But, Betty. Oh, Sugar Plum, you all know how all and you all feel about us all. So after we're married, we all move down south. And if you all feel the same way, I'll feel and you. Oh, all such all a blabbermouth. <laughs> Well, hello, Zero. Say, is that the wedding march you're humming? Certainly, Mr. Wallington. I'm going to a wedding, you know. Yeah, but why should you be so happy? It's not your wedding day. That's why I'm happy. <laughs> is it going to be a smart wedding? What's the groom wearing? Oh, the usual. A rented tuxedo. Ah, oh, there's nothing I like better than a well-dressed groom. Uh, I suppose if he uses Vitalis, he'd be a well-groomed groom, huh? That's very good, Zero. Uh, like that. Yes, and true. Vitalis makes any man's hair well groomed. For Vitalis and the famous 60 second workout does wonders for keeping dry, unruly hair under control and looking its best. And it's so easy, too. All you do is put a little Vitalis on your scalp, and for just 50 seconds you rub briskly. And then for 10 seconds you comb. That's all. But what a change. Your hair looks well groomed in a natural, masculine way, without that objectionable patent leather shine. Without that plastered down look. What's more, the Vitalis 60 second workout loosens a tight, dry scalp, routes loose dandruff, and helps prevent excessive falling hair. Vitalis is available at drug counters everywhere. So to look your best tomorrow, get a bottle of Vitalis tonight. And now the smart set with their arrangement of Why Does It Get So Late So Early? Why does it get so late so early when I'm so in love with you? We never dance enough, don't get the chance enough. Why, honey, we just don't have time to romance it up. Just think of it, all the hugs and kisses that we never will get to. Why does it get so late so early, honey, when I'm so in love with you? I'm so in love with you. Why does it get so late so early when I'm so in love with you? We never dance enough, don't get the chance enough. Why, honey, we just don't have time to romance enough. Just think of all those kisses that we don't get to. Why does it get so late so early when I'm so in love with you, baby? We never dance and get the chance to romance, baby. 
in love with you. Well, folks, usually the happiest day in a man's life is his wedding day. However, today, Alan Young is marrying Lula Bell. And we find the reluctant bridegroom all alone in an upstairs room in Lula Bell's house, waiting for the ceremony to begin. Alan is making his final preparations. Uh, got the tie around my neck just right. I don't know if I can only kick the chair away with my feet. <laughs> oh, well. Young, you're crazy. Why don't you look at this sensibly? You love Betty and you know it. Why don't you sneak out the door and get away? That's an idea. I'll just tiptoe through the door and... Going someplace, Alan? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mr. Didn't Pepper. <laughs> I was just, just practicing how to carry somebody across the threshold. <laughs> practicing carrying somebody over the threshold. Alan Young, put me down. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Dittenpepper. You're not getting out of this room until they start the ceremony. Now get back in there and stay there. <laughs> Why didn't I talk back to him? I didn't propose to Lula Bell. I don't want to get married to her. Get tough with me, Willie. Only one reason I didn't let him have it. I haven't got it. <laughs> yes, you're trapped. You're going to have to marry Lula Bell. Come in. Hello, Alan. Oh, Betty, it's you. Alan, I I just came here to wish you a lot of luck, and... Gee, just look at you, all dressed up formal. Top hat, white tie, and turtleneck sweater. <laughs> I'm not going to wear this. I just got cold thinking about the wedding. Believe me, Betty, no matter what happens, you're the only girl I'll ever love. Oh, Alan, it's not fair to Lulu Bell to say things like that. That's how I feel, Betty. I... Should have told you this sooner, but I, I guess I'm pretty shy. Alan, you're the shyest fellow I ever met. Yeah, but I did take you through the tunnel of love once. Yes, and I'll never forget that evening. There I was, sitting in the boat, and there you were, swimming along behind. <laughs> I guess it's all over now, Betty. Those things will just become fond memories. Yes, Alan. Goodbye. Well, before you go, Betty, would you do me a little favor? Oh, anything, Alan. Well, would you take your father out of the hall and take him downstairs for a glass of punch or something? Oh, I, certainly. Well, goodbye, Alan. Bye, Betty. <laughs> She's talking to Mr. Ditton Pepper. Here they go down the hall. How's my chance? I'll just tiptoe out and I'll... Oh, sugar plum! <laughs> oh, hello, Lula Pell. Oh, Hanita, I'll bet you all couldn't wait to see me all. Yeah. What do you think of my wedding gown? Seems rather daring. Oh, Sugar Plum, how can y'all say that? My grandmother wore this at her wedding, and my mother wore it, too. This is a hand-me-down. They didn't hand you down enough. <laughs> oh, you're so clever. I just can't wait for my father to meet you. Well, maybe your father won't have... Of me. After all, he's a southerner and I'm from the north. Oh, uh -huh. well, Sugar Plum, father don't mind me marrying a northerner. Uh -huh. Oh, no. The only type of man that he can't stand are those rough westerners. He can't stand westerners, huh? No. He hates them ever since those cowboys shot up the town while he was making a speech. Oh, but he'll like you, honey, child. Come on, now, let's go downstairs. He's just dying to meet you. Oh. Doesn't like westerners, huh? Oh, oh, there's father over there with those people. Oh, father! Yes, my little magnolia blood. <laughs> Here he is, father, my own little old sugar plum. Now, you two get acquainted while I mingle with the guests. Well, I'm mighty proud to make your acquaintance, Alan. My friends call me Tex. <laughs> I can hardly believe my ears. You call them ears? <laughs> Not where I come from. They're mighty handy for fanning flies off in town. Are you the man who's taken my daughter away from me? Hold on, stranger. Nobody can call me a horse thief. <laughs> this is impossible. Mm. You can't be the man who's going to slip a ring on her finger. Slip a ring on her finger? Well, I'm going to brand my initials on her high her side. Clip <laughs> <laughs> her ears, 
together. <laughs> Smile when you say that, stranger. I'm plenty tough, see? Well, I eat cactus for breakfast and wool for lunch and for dinner a spit sweaters. I have stood enough of this. Reach for the sky, I'm starting to throw lead, see? <laughs> Fill you so full of holes, you'll be able to drink a mint julep and sprinkle your plantation at the same time. Well, that, that settles that The wedding needs off. Hello there, Colonel. Hello, Alan, my boy. <laughs> Mr. Dissing Pepper, you know how I feel about Westerners. Well, this cowboy happened to kill me. Alan's no cowboy, Colonel. He's just a practical joker. Just wanted to see if his future father in law could take it. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can take a joke as well as the next one. Come on, uh, X. Lula Bell is waiting by the preacher. Oh, Sugar Plum, here you are. Yes, Lula Bell. Soon the preacher will make us one. I'll be part of you, and you'll be part of me. We'll be part of each other. Won't there be confusion when we're getting dressed in the morning? <laughs> Listen, Lula Bell, there's something you should know. And now will the bride and bridegroom please step forward. Do you, Lula Bell, take this man for your lawful wedded husband? I sure enough do. And do you, Alan Young, take this woman for your lawful wedded wife? Huh? <laughs> if there is anyone... If there is anyone who knows why these two shouldn't be united in matrimony... Let him speak now or forever after hold his peace. I got plenty to say. <laughs> just a minute. Just a moment, please. Just a moment, please. Who is this meddler? I ain't no meddler. I was in the war, but they never give me one. Hero, <laughs> what do you got to say? Uh, the ring, Helen. Huh? How can you marry a dame when she's wearing somebody else's engagement ring? The ring. That's right. Let's look at that ring. Uh, uh, there seems to be something engraved in this ring. Let me see now. This ring is the property of Hubert Updike. If found, please return to the First National Bank and receive the Second National Bank as a reward. <laughs> you see, Lula Bell, you're supposed to marry Hubert Updike. Well, shut my mouth. It's a wonderful fella. Well, shut my mouth. Hubert's a good catch. Ah, oh, Hubert's a dope. Oops. Hey, somebody shut my mouth. <laughs> Oh, Betty, isn't it nice sitting here on your front porch again? Oh, yes, it is, Alan. And you're not sorry that you're not married to Lulu Bell, are you? Of course not, Betty. After all, Lulu Bell had stacked the money. Betty? Yes, Alan? I think you're pretty well stacked, too. <laughs> During the week, please remember the two fine products that bring you this show, Ipana for the smile of beauty and Vitalis for well-groomed hair. Ipana Vitalis. Until next week, then, this is Alan Young saying good night. Here's relief, fast relief, for anyone suffering from the discomfort of a cold. It's Minute Rub, a really modern chest rub. Get Minute Rub and get comforting as well as fast relief. All you do is rub Minute Rub on the throat, chest, and back. In a minute, Minute Rub's soothing vapors get to work. In a minute, Minute Rub's menthol vapors begin to clear up that stuffed-up feeling in the nose and throat. In a minute, Minute Rub starts to bring a feeling of warmth and relief to those tight, sore, aching muscles. And listen, here at last is a chest rub that's greaseless and stainless. Disappears like vanishing cream so it can't stain clothes and bed linens. So get a tube of Minute Rub and get relief from annoying cold misery the modern way. The greaseless, stainless, minute rub way. This is James Wallington to remind you that Alan Young can now be seen in the 20th century Fox picture, Margie. The Alan Young radio show is written by Al Schwartz and Sherwood Schwartz. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.